have the history of Little Flock Church of God in Christ by Sister Joyce Howe, following Chi Chi Kole by Elder Turner, Genesis Young, and Michaela Turner and Jamari Carmen. I'll be reading the history of the Church of God in Christ. I mean, the Little Flock Church of God in Christ. I'm sorry. <laughs> church. Nobody knows I don't like to be up here, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> Our history, the Church of God in Christ, number two, eventually known as Little Flock, starting with seven children, two adults, brothers and sister A. Lee of Monterey in the home of the pastor and missionary O'Neill, on August the 6th, 1955. With the leading of the Lord and the permission from Bishop E.B. Stewart and Pastor A.C. Johnson, landed lunch out to establish a mission for God. On September 29th, 1955, the first Sunday school session was held at 517 Warrington Avenue in Redwood City, California. The membership outgrew the home and to accommodate the member service, were held November 6, 1955, at the Forest Hill in Redwood City. The Lord blessed this first congregation. Unfortunately, this congregation was short-lived, and a new ministry and new church was birthed under the leadership of Pastor and Sister O'Neill. The seeds for the Church of God in Christ, number two, was the divine mission of Elder E.J. O'Neill, which officially launched in 1955 with $5 in the treasury donated by Sister Florence McMillan. With the co collaborative effort of Pastor O'Neill, Brother J.L. Martin, and Brother Edward Knight, the divine work of God, the foundation was poured on December 29, 1956. After laborous tolling, the Lord permitted the congregation to march their building December 25, 1957 at 6 a.m. to hold their first service. In 1958, the consent of the membership and divine innovation used by Valerie Garden, one of the first children of the second congregation, pulled the name three times from the hat. The church was named Little Flock Church of God in Christ. By 1965, the church was completely finished and purchased. The ceiling lights and chairs were donated the same year. Little Flock membership have increased since the beginning. Little Flock had a total of 66 boys and 66 girls under the age of 18. This did not include any of the parent members and neighborhood friends that joined the church. In 1972, the Little Flock Sunday School Department grew tremendously from 1955 to 1972, Little Flock had 11 Sunday school functioning classes. With the help of the superintendent, Sister Nell Dias, deceased, and the secretary missionary Betty Fulcher, deceased, Little Flock had an ideal Sunday school department. The head of the National Sunday School Department, Bishop Williams, came to visit Little Flock Sunday School to, to monitor how Little Flock operated in Sunday school. To this day, Little Flock still have a structured and organized Sunday school department. In 1980, Pastor O'Neill expanded his horizon and launched the effort of refurbishing the interior of the sanctuary. The ceiling was lowered and the light system was installed. New carpet was laid to coordinate with the pews. Cathedral pool chair from the motherboard and the choir were added. The ladies' powder room redecorated, the dining room was repainted, and new flooring was installed. The exterior was beautified due to the donation by Mr. and Mrs. Michael Genevero. The pastor and the church members donated pews, covers, chairs to renew the looks of the sanctuary. Covering the pulpit, altar, offering tables, and sidebars were made by National Evangelist Pearl Page Brown dear friend of our pastor, deceased in a shut-in. The Lord sent families to add to the attendance and members. Pastor O'Neill retired in 2018 after 63 years of service. Bishop Nathan Bullock appointed evangelist Justin Elder in charge and the church administrator in December 2018. On June 13, 2020, Elder Justin Ginevra was Elevate to pastor Little Flock Church of God in Christ is yet going forward. After 66 years of being established, 
Little Flock continue to live on through the future generation and we continue to live on through the history of our church. All right, beautiful. Okay, come on, Michaela. Man, man. Genesis. Kira, stand right here. Stand right here. All right. Well, we're going <clears> to <throat> present a West African song from a little place called Ghana. And the song is entitled Che Che Kule. Che Che Kule. So we're doing a little bit of African language from the motherland. Now I have with me a pair of West African. These are straight out of Africa. These are called djembes. And uh, it has several different sounds on them. They are special made African drum. What you seeing is a, a pair of African drums straight out of Africa. <laughs> Try it again. He, he's a little ahead of himself. another round of applause and let's give our history another round of applause we've come a long way and we're yet striving now we will have Hambone am I saying that right Hambone by Elder Turner following Ida B. Wells monologue by sister Tina Ferris oh now we will have sorry excuse me we'll have mother to son by Sister Jennifer Jordan, following Hambone by Elder Turner.
Mother Chisani phone by Langston Hughes. Well, son, I'll tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It had tacks in it and splinters and boards tore up. And with, I'm sorry, in places with no carpet on the floor, bare. But all the time, I've been a climbing on and reaching landing and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on those steps because you find it's kind of hard. Don't you fall now, for I still going, honey. I still climbing, for life for me ain't been no crystal stair. All right, do anybody know what Hambone is? Okay, it's actually a song called Hambone, but do anybody know where it came from? Okay, this is a story about where Hambone came from. I wanted to do the story, but I have so much on me that I decided not to do it. But I am going to show you a presentation of the history of Hambone and how the song got started, and then I may go ahead and do a few rhythms myself. But this is Diane Ferlette. She's going to tell the story about Hambone. Kitchen cooking rice. Oh, Hambone, Hambone, where's your son? Hambone, Hambone, where's your son? Down at the lake, having fun. Down at the lake, having fun. Oh, Hambone, Hambone, where's your daughter? Hambone, Hambone, where's your daughter? Down at the lake, swimming in the water. Hambone, have you seen that man? He washed his face in a frying pan. <laughs> Hambone, Hambone, where you been? Nowhere, 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 nowhere. A long time ago, but not too long ago, my ancestors were brought from Africa in chains, put onto boats when we got to America, sold as slaves. And we were sold as slaves. Everything was taken away. Our name, our language, the drums, couldn't play the drum anymore. But we found ways to make our rhythm. And we had to live in tiny little shacks with dirt floors, sometimes no windows. And the people who owned them lived in nice, fine houses. And one time, the people who owned this nice, fine house, ooh, dinner time, they had a great big pile of food on the table. And one time, they had a great big juicy ham on the table. And they ate every bit of that ham. And when they finished eating the ham, they took the ham bone and guess who they gave it to? The slaves. But the slaves had to be smart, just like old Br'er Rabbit. They looked at that ham bone. It did have a little meat on it. And they said the three most important words in African-American culture, they said, Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> what can we do with this? But they took that ham bone and dropped it down in their beans to give their beans flavor. Took the ham bone out and gave it to their neighbor. They put it in their beans to give their beans flavor. Took the ham bone out and gave it to their neighbor. They put it in their beans to give their beans flavor. Took the ham bone out and gave it to their neighbor. Drop it in their beans to give their beans flavor. That old ham bone went from shack to shack to shack to shack to shack. And that's where that song comes from. Ham bone, ham bone, where you been? Round the world and back again. They may not be able to read or write, the slaves. But just because they couldn't read and weren't allowed to write, they didn't mean they weren't smart. They knew about community. 
have one bone, share it. That's the way things were back then. People share what they have with each other. You guys have been a good audience. Amen. So I couldn't have said it better myself. That's where the song came from. And then also that's where per, uh, rhythm percussion, percu body percussion came from. And uh, I'll just give you a little demonstration. When you do this, you have to empty, empty your pockets. <laughs> but uh, so out of that came the the song handbone and also the rhythm uh, rhythm percussion exercises. So this is sort of sorts of how they did it. They hit their thighs, they hit their chest, and they hit their legs. Top of their legs, so. Amen. And then they'll go to their arms. And then they do their head. <laughs> and they always end something like this. But right. it, mine's, is a, mine's not as good as what it should be, but it was, it's usually a pop, like something like that. Okay? So that's pretty much my thing. Beautiful. Beautiful. Amen. That was beautiful. I enjoyed that presentation. Yeah. Now we will have Ida B. Wells' monologue by Sister Tina Ferris and Mah Mahala Jackson bio by Mother Games. In Holly Springs, Mississippi, I became the caregiver to my six siblings at the age of 16 when both of my parents died from yellow fever. In order to support my siblings, I completed my studies at Russ College, where my father was a board member before his demise. I moved to Memphis, Tennessee, where I took a teaching job at a rural school in the 1880s. My civil rights campaign started when I stood up for black Southerners and the way they were treated on the railways. Let me tell you what happened to me. I was on my way to school from Memphis, and the conductor told me that I had to leave my first class seat and move to the smoking car. I refused to get up, and we had an argument. So the conductor and the passengers grabbed me and physically threw me off the train. When I returned to Memphis, I got a lawyer and I sued the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad Company. The court ruled in my favor, awarding me $500. They appealed and the Supreme Court of Tennessee reversed the decision and ordered me to pay them back the court fees. I gave myself a pen name, Lola. I began to write and color newspapers that would go up against the Jim Crow laws of the South. In 1892, three of my friends, Kevin McDowell, Thomas Moss, and Henry Stewart, owned a successful grocery store, which infuriated the white people who owned stores. That march, on the night to be exact, a mob of white men assembled to threaten the three black men. A fight broke out, and a few of the white men had minor injuries, but the police 
arrested the three black businessmen. They were removed from the holding cell and lynched. That incident pressed me to raise awareness to other lynchings by reporting on them, writing books, and lecturing. Because of my honest reporting in the newspapers and pamphlets, my free speech office was torched and my life was threatened. I continued my work overseas in England. I returned, settled down, and added other causes to my campaign. I fought for women's rights during the suffrage era. I helped launch the National Association of Colored Women, and I co-founded the NAACP. I lived to the age of 69. I departed this life in the year of 1930. I am Ida B. Wells Burnett. Hagar Jackson was an American gospel singer. She was widely considered one of the most influential vocalists of the 20th century, approximately 40 years. Mahalia was born October 26, 1911 in New Orleans, Louisiana. She died January 27, 1972 at the age of 60. She died in Evergreen Parks, Illinois. After making an impression in the church in Chicago, she was hired to sing at funerals, political rallies, and revivals. In 1947, she was recognized with the release of Move On Up A Little Higher. Mahalia came, became the first gospel recording artist in Europe, she was the first. She signed for fundraisers at the March on Washington for Freedom in 1963. She was also a loyal supporter for Martin Luther King Jr. And she was a personal friend of the family. Okay, that's it, that's it. Amen. Amen. I'm enjoying the program thus far, you guys. Are you learning something? Now we will have a solo, Precious Lord, by Sister Daphne, following the offering the fi with the Finance Committee. Precious, precious Lord, take my
let me stand. See, I am tired and I'm weak. I want, yes. Ooh, that's not. Precious Lord, and lead, lead me on. When my my way Thank you, baby. Thank you, Pastor. As I was saying, God has not forgotten us. He has not forsaken us. He has not left us. He's been with us. He stayed with us. Glory to God. I heard him talking about the bone went from place to place. But you know, God, that was God that was keeping us and not we ourselves. We, have, we thank God for what he's done for us down through the years. And I tell you, can't nobody do you like Jesus. 
Glory to God. We're getting ready to take up an offering on tonight, and we asked if you would to help us and bless us to, uh, on tonight. And, and you know what? Give liberally, because if you give liberally, the Lord to see it in secret will do what? Reward you openly. We honor God tonight, and to our superintendent of being with us, and to our leader, and to first lady, Amen. and to all of our guests on tonight. Little Flock, give a hand to our guests. We're normally on their end, but they on our end tonight. We're so grateful to have them here. I tell you, we glory, we glorify God for everything that he's doing for us. And the program is just beautiful. Just beautiful. So at this time, Sister Gates. Amen. I agree with everything she said. And we're going to be a blessing to the Lord on tonight. We're not asking for a certain amount, but God knows what we have. Amen. And we're going to be liberal with our giving. And now you're in the hands Amen. of... Amen. We want to thank the Lord that um, Emmanuel has sent an offering tonight. Amen. From their church and Pastor Jones. Superintendent Jones have sent us an offering. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank Amen. you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Amen. Be with us. Amen. Amen. We'll have words of expressions from them a little later on in the program. But at this time, we ask you to all stand. And we're going to have Minister Jordan to come and give us the blessing over the offering. Yes. Amen. And then you'll be in the hands of the ushers. saints as we bow our heads oh heavenly father we thank you once again for this offering we're about to receive we ask that you bless every man woman child here tonight we ask that you bless them exceedingly abundantly 30 60 100 times as full in the name of jesus amen 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 Thank you for your liberality. Now we will have a presentation, The Black Theater by Sister Turner following Ain't I a Woman by Sister Patsy. Amen. If I could have everyone direct your attention to the monitor up front. This is an introduction to gospel, black gospel theater. The Chitlin Circuit, the circuit dates back to the 1920s when theater goers, when theater owners booking association brought plays to black audiences throughout the South and Midwest, crisscrossing black America. The circuit established an empire of melodrama and farce. The productions are for, by, and about black folks, and they're very relatable. The plays are not high art, but the all black audiences is immensely involved in the action on stage. Harlem Renaissance poet and playwright Langston Hughes wrote the first all black gospel stage play, The Black Nativity in 1961. This musical production was first performed off-Broadway on December 11, 1961.
the show had a successful tour of Europe in 1962. The musical production has been performed off Broadway over the decades and in many black churches at Christmas. In 2013, a film version starring Forrest Whitaker, Angela Bassett, Mary J. Blige, Tyrese, and Jennifer Hudson was released. Although not African-American stage plays, Jesus Christ Superstar and Godspell have dominated Broadway and off-Broadway for over 40 years, and they still have a devout fan base. Vinette Carroll came along to the scene and straight to Broadway with the gospel music play, Your Arms Are Too Short to Box With God in 1976. So here's, um, there's a commercial that This is Vanette Carroll's Your Arms Too Short to Box With God. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time. Oh, yes, we are. We're going to have a good time. Come on in and sit right down. Let's have a good time. We're going to have a good time. More singing, more dancing, more straight out joy than you've ever seen live on any stage. Come on down and dance in the aisle. Vanette Carroll's Your Arms Too Short to Box With God. See it now. Held over by popular demand at the Studebaker 435700. Your Arms Are Too Short to Box With God was revised twice on Broadway, and within a few years, black churches and black theater companies all over the country started performing the musical in their local areas, and it remained a hit throughout the 1980s. Mama Plays in the late 1980s and 1990s. Mama, I Want to Sing, starring Desiree Coleman, circa 1988. We'll play a very short uh, part of this. Mama, I want to sing. The longest running black off-Broadway musical in the history of American theater. Mama ran for eight years off-Broadway in New York. 2,500 performances. Four years on tour across the USA. Nine tours to Japan. Mama has played in Germany, Austria, Italy, Switzerland, and on the West End of London, with great success. Keep your minds on Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. But keep your eyes on me. Giving. David E. Talbert and Tyler Perry reigns late 90s and 2000s. David E. Talbert, born 1966, heralded by the Los Angeles Times as one of the most prolific theater makers in America, David E. Talbert's heartfelt depictions of life and love mixed with his ability to infuse comedy in the midst of chaos have captivated audiences across the country, making Talbert a highly sought after content creator across all platforms. This is a little clip of he say, she say, but what does God say? We can't be moved out of church like that. Then what we gonna do? Such a great man and a bright light And every Sunday morning he let it shine For this holy temple he gave his life So what do we do?
You have no place here. You can't come up in my space, no. Whatever is he that sent me? If you don't get the message. Okay, love on layaway. This might be a little heavy, um, but this is uh, one of David E. Talbert's uh, plays. Very popular plays, I should say. plays lord have mercy talk show live what goes around comes around telling like it is a fool in his money love makes things happen mr right now his woman his wife the fabric of a man he say she say but what god say love on layaway love in the nick of time what my husband don't know suddenly single another man will Tyler Perry, born 1969, writer, actor, producer, and director, Tyler Perry has built an entertainment empire that consists of successful film, plays, and a best-selling book. In 1992, he directed, produced, and starred in the musical Know That I've Been Changed, his 2000 play, I Could Do Bad All By Myself, brought to life the character Medea, who would later appear in several successful films. Perry has also developed several television shows, including House of Pain, and acted in such recent films as Gone Girl, uh, 2014 circa. Medea, developing quite a following. Medea has starred in a number of plays, including Medea's Family Reunion and Medea's Clash Reunion, 2002-2003. Perry toured extensively with his shows, According to his website, 35,000 people a week saw one of his shows in 2005. Diary of a Mad Black Woman. That same year, Perry proved himself to be a box office powerhouse with the release of his debut film, Diary of a Mad Black Woman, starring Kimberly Elise as the scorned wife and Steve Harris as the adulterous husband. Perry appeared as three different characters in the film, including the legendary Medea, eventually grossing more than 50 million. The film's success showed Hollywood that there was a market for urban African-American comedies. Many of the themes in his work reflect theology and social behavior indicative of the predominantly black church culture, 
such as the many scenes in both of his stage and screen work that feature church settings and worship styles commonly found in predominantly African-American churches, including showcases of gospel music and artists. So this is Neighbors from Hill 2014. You're looking good, girl. And, and you looking just like you did when I left here. Bam, please change your clothes sometime. Where you going? Mind your business. Die! Come on! Okay. What was you just doing? I was running for my life, honey. You can't go up there. I can't go up here? No. No. <laughs> uh, who are you? I'm deaf in a dress. Do you want to come get some? There's somebody that God will send to help you. Will you help us? He may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Don't let her actions confuse you with who God is, OK? Can you Episcopal Zion, Temple of the Living God, Church of God in Christ, Missionary Baptist Church. You say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir, when somebody asks you a question that's older than you, do you understand me? Yes, sir. Boy, do I look like a man to you? Don't you dare answer that. <laughs> okay, Tamala Medley and I can do all bad by myself, um, Medea's class reunion. Dear Wisdom, you know, people don't want their intelligence insulted. They don't want to be preached to. They don't want to be degraded. All they want to do is sit, laugh, have a good time, love one another, forget about what's going on in the world, and find something out so they can be useful in this life. Do this, and you, can, and you have common sense. Tyler Perry, don't make a black woman take off her earrings. <laughs> Thank you. Ain't I a woman? Right. This was delivered at the 1851 Women's Convention right in on. Anchorage, Ohio, by Sojourner. Speak that way. Oh, you want me to say it again? Yeah, yeah. speak into the mic. Okay, here speak I go. Mic. Thank you, Pastor. Ain't I a woman? Delivered in 1851 at the Women's Convention. Anchorage, Ohio, by Journa True. All right. Okay. Well, children, there is so much racket, there must be something out of character. Hitler here. I think that twixt the Negroes of the South and the women at the North, 
all talking about rights. The white men will be in a fix pretty soon. But what all this talk here talk, what they talking about? All right. Well, the man over there said, women need to be helped into carriages, lifted over ditches, and have, and have to have the best place everywhere. Nobody ever helped me in a carriage or over a mud puddle or giving me any best place. Ain't I a woman? All right. All right now. <laughs> look at me. Look, look at my arms. Beautiful arms. See my arms one more time. Let me hear. Make sure I got some. Okay. okay. Here I come. Here I come. Okay. Let me get my arm back here. I done plowed. I done planted. And gathered into the barn. No man could ever head me. Ain't I a woman? I could work as as much and eat as much as a man when I could get it. And to bear and lash as well. And ain't I a woman? Okay, here I come now, y'all. Y'all ready? No, okay. I have born 13, 13. children My God. and seen most of them so long. My God. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, Lord, help me now. Here you come. I, I, and when I cried out, my mother's grief, but God, Jesus heard me. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Ain't I a woman? Yes. Then they talked about this thing in the head. What's this they call it? Oh, that's it, honey. What's that got to do with? Women's rights or Negro rights. All right. If your cup won't hold but a pint, and your and your hold as much as a quart, won't you be mean to give me my measure to fill my cup up? Yeah. They ain't gonna do it. Then that little man in black there, did you see him? He said, women can't have as much rights as a man because Christ wasn't a woman. Where did you, well, did your Christ come from? Well, where your Christ come from? From God and a woman. Man had nothing to do with it. That's right. Okay. Y'all remember that now. <laughs> if the first woman God ever made was strong enough to turn the world upside down, all along, these women to, to gather their thoughts ought to be able to turn it back. And get it, get it right, side up again. And now there is asking to do it. The men better let them obligate yourself from hearing, hearing me. Y'all hear me now? 
and now the soft ain't got nothing more to say. <laughs> Amen, amen. <laughs> Didn't she get into character, y'all? <laughs> Ain't she a woman? <laughs> now we will have <laughs> Now we will have a class presentation following a poem by Sister Brianna Ginevra. Where's my students? Students? Today we're having a visiting scholar that's going to teach you some black history. Lord help him. Say hello to Say hello to Mr. Blackman. Nobody told us that. Today he designed, guess what? What? 
All right, I have a short poem called Look at Us. Look at us. The world often tries to bring us down, but look at us. Not only are we surviving, we are thriving. So look at us. We are the embodiment of light. Our brown skin, it shines like pearls, and our hair oh so tightly curled. Now look at us. College is made just for us. I so deep and rich like angel does, so I believe in the God we trust. But look at us, our roots so deeply woven, the life our ancestors have spoken. So look at us. Watch us walk with a stride, cause our black, cause our black is too rich to hide. So look at us, black kings and queens. Look at us. Wasn't that beautiful? Yes. She said, "Look at us." Now we will have Martin and Malcolm excerpt from a different world following Andre Crouch presentation and melody by DeShandra. Simon. I mean, I what to my partner. All right, Terrell, come on in and get to it before I change my mind. Brother Mal, here we are. Yes, here we are, Dr. King. You know, I never thought this day would come. The passing of the Civil Rights Bill. We have come so very far. You and I were born at this turning point in history. We are witnessing the fulfilling of prophecy. We are both free and destined. And freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. I am for freedom. For a society in, in which our people are recognized and respected as human beings. And I believe we have the right to resort to any means necessary to bring that about. My brother, through violence, you may murder a hater, but you can't murder hate. Darkness cannot put out darkness. Only light can do that. Now, I believe in arming myself, but with knowledge, education, and enlightenment. We may differ in method, but that does not mean we differ in objective. True. And if a man hasn't discovered something he will die for, he isn't fit to live. If I can die, having brought any light, having exposed any meaningful truth that will help destroy the racist cancer that is malignant in the body of America, then all credit is due to Allah. Only the mistakes are mine. My brother, God does not judge us by the separate incidents of the separate mistake that we make, but by the total bent of our lives. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Martin. God bless you too, Brother Malcolm. Now watch out. You talk to me. Now you're going to get investigated. Very good work, oh, gentlemen. Right. Very good work. Class, we will continue next time. You are dismissed. Thank you very much. Yes. Oh, oh. Impressive. But Malcolm and Martin have not completely bailed you out, Terrell. Thanks, Dean. Don't thank me. This isn't going to be easy. As of right now, you are under a curfew. Oh, that's cool. You must maintain a GPA of A minus or better. <laughs> that ain't no problem. <laughs> and you will be volunteering 20 hours a week at the Thurgood Marshall Rec Center. All right, all right, cool. See, I have a dream to stay in school by any means necessary. Very nice touch, dear. Uh, Dean? 
Personally, I think you made the right decision by keeping Terrell in school and putting him on the streets. Mr. Hayward, I live for your approval. <laughs> Giving honor to everyone on the pulpit. The house has already been addressed. I'm going to read about Andre Crouch, and then following that, we'll go into a little melody. Andre Edward Crouch was born on July 1st, 1942, along with a twin sister, Sandra, in Compton, Los Angeles, California, to parents Benjamin and Minister and Catherine Howdid Crouch. They were raised in San Fernando Valley, California. Although, and, although Andre was dyslexic, he played with the piano for Church of God in Christ in San Fernando Valley. He wrote his first gospel composition at the age of 14. Crouch graduated from San Fernando Senior High School in 1960 and the same year created the Church of God in Christ Singers Kojics with the legendary Billy Preston at the piano. Crouch became the pastor of Christ Memorial Church of God in Christ in Pasamania in 1962 at the age of 22, following his brother's death. At the time, Crouch was also studying at the Valley Junior College in San Fernando Valley. And while there in 1965, he formed an ensemble, Andre Crouch and the Disciples, the following year, in 1966, he left and began taking classes at Life, Bible, at Life Bible College in Los Angeles. Over the next 50 years, Andre emerged as one of the most popular gospel artists in the United States, recording over 700 singles, more than 45 albums. His most successful album, Keep On Singing, released in 1972. Some of Crouch's compositions are The Blood That Jesus Shed For Me, To God Be The Glory, Soon And Very Soon, Bless The Lord O oh My Soul, Jesus Is The Answer, and Through It All. Crouch received many awards over the decades. He has won eight Grammy Awards and was nominated for 20. Crouch was nominated for the music composition featured in the film The Color Purple. The songs was Maybe God is trying to tell you something. And heaven belongs to you in 1985. In 1997, Crouch received an honorary doctorate of music from the Berklee College of Music in Boston, Massachusetts. The following year in 1998, he was inducted, he was inducted into the Gospel Music Association, Gospel Music Hall of Fame. In 2004, he was awarded a Hollywood Walk of Fame star. Crouch's Let the Church Say Amen featuring Marvin Winans peaked at the number 32 and remained charted for 17 weeks at the Billboard's R&B Airplay. For more than 60 weeks, the single stayed at the top of the charts, prompting Billboard to name him Gospel Song Artist of the Year. Andre departed this life on January 8th, 2015. So now we'll go and sing a melody of his songs. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its 
his power The blood That Jesus Shed For me We know it was Thank 
you. Wasn't that lovely? I have, thank you for letting me be your MC on tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed the program. I learned something. I hope you guys have too. Now I will leave it in the hands of my pastor. Let's give our MC a hand. Amen. Did we enjoy our MC? Come on, give our MC a hand. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There's been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that my trials come only to make me strong. Oh, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Yes, I learned to trust in God. Oh, through it all, hallelujah, through it all, I learned to depend upon his word, hallelujah, through it all, we've learned to trust in him, amen, we're coming close to the end of our program, but amen, we thank the Lord for Elder Superintendent, Pastor, Eugene Jones coming all the way from Seaside to be here with us tonight. And his lovely wife, amen, First Lady Mary Grace Jones, amen. And at this time, we're going to have him to come and have words of expression and just let the Lord go as he feel led, amen. All right, amen. Let's say amen from this right hand and say God bless Superintendent Jones. you on tonight certainly we give honor to the spirit of christ and to pastor Genevero. come on and give him a hand praise amen, amen. to elder turner and to <laughs> to elder turner and to minister uh jordan amen to our, to the church mother amen and to all the people of the lord especially to my own wife amen to the first lady mary grace Amen. The love of my life. Amen. Amen. And to those from Emmanuel who came, God bless you on tonight. Amen. Certainly it is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord on tonight. Amen. I've enjoyed all of the program that I've heard. Amen. I've enjoyed everything. Just, right. just everything. It's a, just a joy to be with you on tonight. As always, it is a joy to be with you. Amen. And I just, I just appreciate God on tonight. <clears throat> I don't have much of a voice, so I dare not try to sing. Mm -mm, I dare not try to sing. But if I was to say a word on tonight, I would remind you that all throughout the Bible, there are people of African descent. There are people who, who love God, uh, who had skin colors just like you and I. But there, are, there is one that I really like because I like the way he did things and I like what he says. And I like the fact that when they find him, they find him reading the Bible. You remember in the book of Acts, I believe it was the, 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 the uh, evangelist Philip whom the Holy Ghost moves on and says to Philip, turn and go this way. Philip turns, ah, uh, you ain't going to make me preach, boy. You might as well just stop already. You're trying to help. You're trying to make me preach. Uh, Philip turns, and he goes that way, and he sees a chariot. And in that chariot, there is an Ethiopian eunuch. Amen. And he is a Ethiopian. You got to understand. You got to understand. He is a man that looks like me. He is a man that looks like you. His skin tone, his color is like us. Yeah, and he is here in the Bible. And notice what he's doing. He is not just doing anything, but he is searching the scripture. Yeah, he is trying to find out what would God have. Oh, bless his name for me. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is important, people of God, that we understand that we come from a people that did not just take a word, but we come from a folk who searched out a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we come from a people who had to learn. And not only had to learn, we wanted to learn. And so when he finds him reading the gospel, he says to him, Philip says to him, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, he says, do you understand what you're reading? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the man that looked like me responds to Philip. He says, how can I understand unless somebody, somebody explain it to me? Yeah, Philip then begins to explain to him the gospel. And in explaining to him the gospel, uh, the eunuch declares, well, there is water right there. What hinders me from being baptized? Can I come to tell you that there is nothing that hinders you if you really want it? Uh, no matter what comes against you when you want it. Yeah, can I tell you something? When you really want it, it doesn't matter what side of the track you was born on. It don't matter who your daddy was. It doesn't matter who your mother was. When you really want it, you'll go after it. I'm done. But can I tell you, let's, let's go after what God has for us. Don't let nobody stop you because you have what it takes. You have the knowledge you have the brain, and you have the ability to do. You know the National Negro uh, College Fund's uh, 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 theme, right? Their slogan, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Amen. God bless you. Hey, Turner, come on, help us out a little bit. <laughs> come on, come on. Hallelujah. Didn't we enjoy that tonight? Amen. That was wonderful. Amen. And that I tell you, that story is really something. Because that, that was actually how the gospel got to Africa. And that's how we found Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If, if Philip hadn't obeyed God, the word would have never got back to Africa. And when it got back to Africa, they established a great church in Ethiopia that yet stands good today. Hallelujah. And it just kept on spreading and spreading and spreading. Hallelujah. Until one day we found the Lord. I cried and I cried. I cried all night long. I cried and I cried. Until I found the Lord, my soul couldn't, couldn't be contented. You know that one? Just couldn't be contented. Just couldn't be contented. Until I found the Lord. Oh, I moan and I moan. I moan all night long. I moan and I moan. Until I found the Lord, my soul just couldn't be contented. So, just couldn't be content. my soul. Until I, well, I prayed and I prayed. Come on, Jeff. I prayed all night long. I prayed and I prayed. Until I found the Lord, my soul just couldn't be content. My soul just couldn't be content. My soul just couldn't be contented. Until I found. Well, I moan and I moan. I moan all night long. I moan and I moan. Until I found the Lord, my soul just couldn't be content. My soul, my soul just couldn't be contented until I found the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. We have a special presentation. Amen. Sister Ned, amen, will come forward with that presentation. Amen. And then we will come back and we will have our closing remarks and we will be dismissed. Amen.
Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for them coming, amen, all the way down from Monterey. They didn't have to do it. And they didn't come by themselves, amen. So with some of the members from Emmanuel Stand, the few that came with us, amen, tonight, thank you so much for coming. Amen. Mother Buchanan, I couldn't let this program in without you. Come on, have words. Because this lady invites me to the to uh, to be with her every year in her Black History program. And I'm hoping, Mother, this will, this will become a tradition where I come to you and you come to me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. What are we celebrating? Black History. What are we celebrating? Black History. We did a great job. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just have one thing to say, and probably none of you know. When Dr. King came to Chicago and they marched down Inglewood Street, I was there. All right. I was there. I was there. We weren't allowed to go outside because if y'all know what really was going on in Chicago at that time, they, the uh, FBI's had hired all the Blackstone Rangers and the Mighty Disciples to um, ambush them. And they had guns. The teenagers had guns. The police was out there looking for the teenagers, but they had kids that were no taller than the gun, carrying the gun. So that's why they couldn't find the gun. And we were sticking our heads out the window because we was in school. Sticking our heads out the window looking at them. But nothing we could say. But I thank God that he did make it out of there when he was in Chicago during the time that I was there. That's part of my black history. Amen. 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 We look forward to going and being with them. Amen. When when they and during the month of February and September. Amen. She always invites me to come be with them during the black history as well as the mission. Amen. So we're looking forward to going back in September. Amen. <laughs> Probably sooner than that, because we know uh, there are other events that take place, praise the Lord. But we're just so happy that they're here. They're like our sister church. And so whenever we have some, they come. And whenever they have some, we go. Amen. So we thank the Lord for them tonight coming all the way in all that traffic. And amen. He said it's not that far. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's love. Amen. Thank God for the love that we have for each other. And we also offer tonight, we have some uh, to-go containers for you to go home and not go home hungry. And we have fried chicken, we have potato salad, rolls, and cake. Doesn't it sound like a train ride to you? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hey, man, if you know anything about uh, black culture, you never travel without fried chicken and potato salad. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and a pound cake. So we have pound cake. So thank the Lord for all of you coming out tonight. And uh, we thank God for this wonderful black history coordinator. Didn't she do a bumper job tonight? Amen. And we're going to appreciate her on next week, but we thank the Lord. Charge it to the pastor's head, not to his heart. We always have something special for our coordinator. She worked so hard and rallied to get all the people here and all of that. And, and I tell you, I think this is pretty good for a pandemic. Amen. So we're looking forward to the Lord blessing us even the more next year and having more fellowship. The uh, Methodist Church wasn't able to come share with us this year, but they did send an offering. So we thank God for them. And the Spanish church down the street would have came, but they had an event yesterday, but they sent an offering. So we thank God. Amen. Amen. For all of them that participated. We're standing at this time. Amen. We're standing at this time. I would say touch somebody, but it is the pandemic. <laughs> but we want to make sure that we remember each other when, as we leave this place and never from your presence. Remember me, remember me, oh Lord, remember me. Now 
now may the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest, root, and abide as we leave this place and never from your presence, keeping us safe over the dangerous streets and the highways, bringing us back at the appointed time in peace and in love. And we'll be careful to give your name the praise. It's time for hence more. And all God's people said, uh, Amen. What I say unto you, I say unto all.